Okay, this video is to show how to extract the effective dielectric constant of a superconducting chip. So, for example, uh, sometimes when we design the resonator, we need to need the need to know the effective dielectric constant, right? Because on top of it, we have vacuum or air, and underneath this meander, we have the silicon, right? Which is about eleven point seven and the vacuum and air is about 1. So what is the effective dielectric constant uh, for me to calculate the wavelength and thus design a, a lambda over 4 or a quarter wavelength uh, resonator, right? So this is the purpose of this uh, video. So the way I did it is that uh, I created a structure like this. So in this structure, Right, so let me um uh, remove the mesh, the the this one. Remove the mesh. Okay, so on top, uh, this is the vacuum, right? Supposed to be the vacuum, and at the bottom, uh, is supposed to be the silicon. Now, this is a very big domain. Why is that? I will show you later, and then. Inside this structure, I have two pads, right? This is rectangle one, rectangle two, and rectangle one. So what are they? So uh, I assign this as the fin conductor, okay? So first of all, uh, we make it, uh, actually this should be uh, 200 nano, but it is okay, it doesn't matter that much. Right, because the niobium that we have on the silic on the chip is about two hundred nanometer, right? So you can change this to two hundred nanometer. Now, then we assign this two pad to imitate. I have two niobium, right? So I want to calculate the capacitor between them. So my trick is this: if everything is vacuum, right, and I vary the distance between these two pad, I will get a, a series of capacitance as a function of distance. If I make all of them silicon, right? The top the top is silicon and the bottom is silicon, it means the whole environment is silicon, I will also get another series of capacitance as a function of distance. And they should have a ratio of 1 to 11.7 if the simulation goes well, right? So if that is the case, then I will assign the top as vacuum, like in this case, and then bottom as the uh, silicon. And then I will try to find out what is the dielectric constant as a function of the distance. And from there, I can find out the effective dielectric constant. Right? It is difficult to understand by just listening to me. Let's take a look at the uh, data that we have. So that is what I have done. Right? So. Uh, first, this is the just the uh, vacuum, right? Only vacuum, and then this is half silicon, half uh, vacuum, and this is all silicon. And I vary the distance between the uh, two uh, two metal from twenty millimeter to one hundred and sixty millimeter, and you do see that the capacitance will reduce, which is good, right? Now, however. If I try to find the ratio between the structure that is embedded in silicon and the structure that is embedded in vacuum, right, which is this column, I divide this one by this one. I find that it's first of all, it is not 11.7. Second, it depends strongly on the distance between them. So that means my simulation is wrong. And why is that? I thought that is because I have uh, something too large millimeter. Then I try to use my, uh, micron, right, with the same distribution. But again, I got almost exactly the same ratio, right? Meaning that uh, this is talking about uh, the capacitance is embedded in silicon divided by the capacitance it is embedded in vacuum, right? Again, it varies from 14 uh, femtofarad to 44 femtofarad. I mean the ratio, sorry, this is not, uh, uh, I mean the uh, vacuum has this much of uh, uh, femtofarad of capacitance 
And then for all silicon, it has this much uh, femtoferon of silicon uh, capacitance, and their ratio vary from 14 to 44. That was very surprising. And why, why was that? And uh, eventually I realized that it is because of the domain that I was using. So now if you click on this domain, right? Uh, I, if you uh, look at this create box, um, I have a domain size of maximum X. I call it maximum X. If you go to the tooth and then you go to the uh, design properties, right? Now you see that now I'm using 0 0.01, uh, which is 1 cm, right? So domain size is about 1 cm, as you can see here, this is 9 millimeter. So it is 1 cm by 1 cm by 1 cm. Before that, when I got this bad result, it was because I only used 1 millimeter by 1 millimeter. So the domain is very important. So after I have done that, uh, so then, I increase the domain size, right? So, uh, and by the way, I also try using still uh, the, uh, the same domain size, but different, uh, but different mesh. Again, I get very bad results, right? The ratio go from 14 to 35. So as finally, I try to increase the domain to 1 cm by 1 cm, right? And now you see that the ratio between all silicon and the vacuum is about 10 to 11. 10 to 12. And then I take an average. It is about 11.7, uh, 36, which is very close to what I expect. And that is, uh, which is 11.7, right? So it does have a lot of uh, error and fluctuation. And that's why I take the average. Now with this, then I uh, also extract the capacitance of what we call half which means that the top is like in this case, the top is the vacuum, the bottom is the silicon, right? Then I get the capacitance. And then I find the ratio between this one and the vacuum, then I get this range. Then the average is 6.11. Now this is pretty close to some ana analytical calculation. But anyway, I will use 6.11 to do the uh, to calculate the effective uh, as the effective dielectric constant to calculate the lambda and thus the length of the resonator of a lambda over four uh, resonator. Okay. Now, so uh, that's the major thing I want to say. Now, after that, I also tried different uh, uh, mesh, different passes, and different. Uh, step it actually get worse for example uh, for the silicon ratio it is not 11.7 i get 12.8 so i assume there's some variation right um th this is a result when i actually add more dense ma denser mesh right and i try to divide this average by the expected value so it's about 9.8 percent more so then i get a value for this real structure half right top is vacuum, bottom is silicon. I got 6.7. I divide 6.7 by this 1.098. So I just reduce it. I still get about 6.1, right? So here, I assume they have the same amount of error. Okay, so that is the result. But uh, this, so if you want to use uh, the, find out the dielectric constant of a superconducting chip uh, with silicon as the substrate and vacuum as the top, then it's about 6.1. But in this tutorial, I also want to explain how to do the simulation and how to set up the boundary, uh, the mesh, etc. Okay, so let me first uh, go back to this structure. So I'm not going to create the structure here. But I just want to say a few things. Uh, first of all, how do I set up the simulation, right? So first of all, uh, if, if you want to do the capacitance extraction, you, if you want to do the capacitance simulation, you need two plates, 
right? Two two D, two D, how do you call it? Two D sheets, right? And for this two D sheet, first, as I said earlier, you need to highlight them. Control, okay. Do it again. Control and put here. You highlight it. Then you click on it. You right click boundary condition. You just assign it as the thin conductor. I'm not going to repeat it. I already done it. Second thing you need to put two net, right? So I will go to here, highlight it, right click, or I can say assign net signal, give you a net name. I done it already. That's why it's net one and net two. You need two of that, right? Okay. Now another thing is important to have a dense mesh. Now I realized that having a very dense mesh might not help, but I was panicked, right? I panicked. So I actually create a region, right? So this is a region and better inside, as you can see here. This is a region. Let me, it's not moving. Right? This is region and better on top. You see, this is the vacuum. And then I have another region at the bottom. I, I should just highlight this, then you will be clear, which is the silicon. Okay. And between them are the two devices I'm trying, uh, are the two plates that I'm from which I want to extract the capacitance, right? So I deliberately add some constraint to it. For example, uh, let me fit all. First of, first of all, I try to make sure that this has a large enough, uh, large enough uh, mesh. I mean, den dense enough mesh. So I highlight both of them. I right click here and then assign mesh and then say on selecting length base. Okay. And then I say that what is the maximum length I want? I already have this here and it is in length two. I double click. Uh, you see that I say uh, the uh, this is the length one, I'm sorry. I say the maximum is 0 0.5 millimeters so that you, you have a dense mesh. And then I don't want it to blow up. So I say the maximum is 1000, okay? At the same time, I also draw a, uh, an assigned region, which is this one rectangle, which is a sheet on this region. And I want to make the mesh very dense here. That's why I, write, I just uh, right click on it and then say uh, assign mesh, uh, assign mesh operation on selection, length base, right? But I did that already, this is length two, I double click, it was 0 0.01 millimeter, very dense. I did not have any uh, constraint on the maximum number of elements, okay? So with that, I also do one thing is the distance between them. I actually did a sweeping on the, uh, what do you call the design, uh, not here. I'm trying to have a variable called D, right? If you look at this too, uh, you see that, not this one, but this one, you see that the distance is the position plus D, right? So I, Try to have optometrics. I right click and then say add the uh, parameter. Uh, just add the parameter. Not here actually. I'm wrong. Uh, what I did is uh, I think is add set up right parametric. I thought so. It should be. Let me see what I did earlier. What I did earlier was actually I went to uh, is that simulation? Yeah, simulation and then optometric, right? And then parametric. Yeah, I think I added this one. Yeah, this is what I did, but somehow it does not come up like, I mean, so you just right click add parametric, right? And just add. And then you can say what variable you want to sweep. For example, I want to sweep D from something to something, right? I already did that. Once you are once you are done, you just you remember to click. Let's say this is one, right? For example, you just click add, then you will be there. And then say okay. But I don't want to add it now, right? So what I had add before was here, right? I double click that one, add it. I sweep from 15 micron to 120 micron at a step of 30 micron. Okay.
So this is one thing. And then how do we visualize the result? Now, it is very important to plot the mesh to make sure your mesh has effect. Sometimes uh, you might not set it properly, right? So what I did here, maybe I can remove the mesh. I just right click, right click here, delete, right click, delete. So how do I do it? I, I'm going to do this, right? Go back to the view uh, or draw and then fit all, right? You can actually, I can select from here also. I just say box two, box one, and then right click. What I'm going to do is say plot mesh from the last adaptive step, okay? Then you say done. Now, this one, I already run the simulation. That's why you see it like this, right? But uh, let me just, uh, remove all the results, QVD extract, and then I say, uh, what do you call, uh, result, clean up solutions, and then delete all of that. And it just control S, right? Then everything will uh, start from scratch. Now you don't see anything, right? So uh, at the same time, I also want to know how the uh, capacitance changes. So you see here, I have different plots. You can go to results and then you just say uh, create matrix report rectangular, rectangular plot, right? You choose ABS to take the absolute value and you care about the their, the capacitance between them, right? And then uh, you can say plot as a function of the path, okay? And uh, of course, you also want to get everything use all values uh, of different D, right? And then close. So let's just save it, control S, and try to run it and see what you get. Now this is cross, is this uh, old data which are wrong, right? So let me just say, analyze all, then it start running, right? But what I want to show you is the mesh first, right? So it start with a very uh, simple mesh, and then you will start, keep improving. Right. Another thing is I want to also want to see the region that I'm interested in. So the region, which is rectangle three, right? So let me just uh, make this invisible first and then go to rectangle three. I can zoom uh, fit C letter, right? This one, I want to uh, plot the mesh. Uh, so I go to, I can do this right click and then say, uh, where's that prop mesh? Say, okay, right? Do you see that it is uh, changing, right? So this is the mesh is getting uh, denser. Now I want to look at the this mesh instead. This is the mesh of the whole structure, right? So you see that it get denser and denser. Now note that in the vacuum, it does not increase so fast, but in the silicon, it increase a lot because it has more electric field due to the high dielectric constant. and actually in this simulation in the setup i oh uh, and again remember to choose capacitance and save field in order to see the mesh and then in this simulation i actually limit the uh refinement per pass to 20 percent otherwise it grow up very quickly yeah so this is the results from uh I mean, this is the one that I have the top as vacuum, the bottom as the silicon, right? Uh, I also have another project that I have the top as the vacuum and bottom above uh, also the vacuum, right? You see that I have all of them vacuum, okay? So yeah, and so how do I extract the results? So for example, in this case, I plotted the uh, capacitance as a function of distance, right? And then I right click, and then I just say export, right? Once export, then uh, I I save it as a CSV, and then I that's how I get all this data, and then I compare them together. Okay. So in summary, I have shared the know-how uh, or my experience on how to extract the effective capacitance. The most important is the domain size and also the mesh.